So, what's the motivation for the card phone? I should start off by saying that we just had a little incident. Um, Timothy Hutton is a jerk face. And I don't mind going on record saying that. And uh, sometimes my anger and resentment at him just boils over and I just lash out. You know, I'll kick him in the neck or just like flick him in the eyeball or, um, you know, like knee him in the testes, the gonads. Does he appreciate these kind of uh, actions? He, he knows he deserves it. He oh. killed my cousin. True story. Timothy Hutton killed my cousin. I'm leaving with that, by the way, on the piece. I'm going to jump in. When did you do this project? And was it, it was obviously after The Office was on. I'm going to be serious for just a second. When, when did I'm you, not. Okay. I appreciate that, actually. When did you get attached to this, and how did you come to it? Well, um, after the was doing last season of The Office. I got a number of offers to do movies, but everything was very kind of broad comedies, uh, very broad stuff. And um, I uh, just really felt like doing something different, and the script was sent to me, and I really responded to the story. It's a really beautiful story that merges kind of uh, science fiction, but also metaphysical and spiritual uh, journeys along with the science fiction and uh i'm very into that stuff and uh i just thought it was it was a great story and a really interesting character and i met with bob shea and he'd been attached to it for so long and helped develop it for 12 years and um i really wanted to be part of it and did you were you a, a little bit indecisive with it i mean you know the first film since the, the, the popularity of you know uh, right. Did you, did you feel any stress about which project? No, I mean, it, this, uh, you know, it's always hard to like, because you, when you're doing a TV show, you have this hiatus time of this break, and you kind of have to choose your projects wisely, because it's a very limited amount of time, but I, um, I, I pretty much knew this is what I wanted to do. I think I, I really am very happy that I did it. Yeah. I, I haven't seen the project yet, uh, but I read everything about it and it sounds very very interesting actually i'm going to jump into a few other things right now go you go uh, let's talk about Keenan Rose, Unkillable Servant of Justice. yes well, um, it's a very funny story. Uh, this movie, Kane and Rhodes, Unkillable Servant of Justice. Um, I was on the set of The Office, and Jenna Fisher, who plays Pam, the receptionist, she she came up to me and she goes, you know, Rain, I did a reading of a movie about two or three years ago, and you'd be perfect for the lead. It's at Bob Odenkirk's office, this movie. And uh, Bob Odenkirk is a writer, director, um, he's doing the upcoming Brothers Solomon with Will Arnett and Will Forte promises to be pretty great and uh, he was the creator of Mr. Show and uh, I was like I'd love to look at it and they talked to Bob Odenkirk and they sent me over a copy and I loved it and and Bob was really intrigued with the idea of me doing it and we did a little pass on the script with the writers and we just went around town and pitched it and uh, it was bought by MTV Films and uh, you know, there's a couple more steps to take before it's like green lit and we're shooting it. But hopefully, we hope to be shooting it this summer. It's a really funny. Um... <laughs> Can you get a shot of his ass, please? So, it's a really funny comedy about um, this guy who serves subpoenas, and uh, he takes himself way too seriously and. He, um, did you, did you or any of your readers or viewers happen to see a movie called Turk 182 by any chance? Turk 182. Yeah. Some of my readers or viewers, uh, must have seen it as well. Uh-huh. I haven't addressed that in the interview though. Keep going. Keep going. Where do you go from there? Come on. You know, there's been a lot of press here at the film festival about Dakota Fanning getting, you know, raped can i say raped on the internet um in this movie this indie movie that she did but timothy hutton actually raped me over the course of making this film it wasn't part of the film itself it wasn't in the story of the film i think someone caught it on camera oh i mean it's date rape 
you know, no means no, and I don't think Tim understands that. He was a star. <laughs> I mean, like he said, you know, my lips were saying no, but my eyes were saying yes. And, and but I feel very violated. And uh, since then, I've just been watching Turk 182 over and over and over again. I don't know if you know the story of Turk 182, but he's a uh, graffiti artist and uh, just a just a rabble rouser and a right. What else? Yeah, I was a rabble rouser in uh, Turk 182, and it was um, it was a great great film. It was uh, it was Rain Wilson. Um, I don't know if you remember him. He used to be. Uh, I think he was at Sundance once, and he was on a little TV show called The Place to Work. No, The Office. It was called The Office. He uh, I had an opportunity to work with Rain Wilson, and um, and I think it's really sad what happened, you know, to him. But um, there's a well. That's that was just a, a story that he. It's based in truth, but I, I, it's based in truth, but I concocted it for the press because I'm trying to get a lot of media attention. So, okay, okay well, I'm, I'm going to switch back on. If you want to stay with us, though, come here. Yeah, I, I want to actually switch on to something else, which is bonsai shadow hands. Shadow hands. Oh, I'm, ooh, I'm, shadow hands, bro. My bad, my bad. Um, yeah, another uh, <laughs> great story about this. Uh, uh, I uh, I was sitting in a Starbucks in Vancouver, and um, Jason Reitman came up to me, who directed Thank You for Smoking, and he was like, hey, man, you don't know me, but I'm Jason Reitman, and uh, I want to do a movie in which you play a ninja who lives in the San Fernando Valley. And I was like, cool. And so I came up with a pitch and an idea and pitched it to him, and uh, we went in and sold it to Fox Searchlight, and um, I'm writing it. And I'm going to star in it, and I'm going to play a badass ninja uh, down on down down on down on its gills. What is that? Down at his gills? Down on his luck? It's a hard luck story of a former ninja. So you're writing it, and you're going to star in it. Yes. Do you have a writing process that, being serious for a second, are you a, like a can you just turn it on and start writing, or are you a you know a nine to five writer? You know, I, I don't really know. I, I'm not really a writer, so for me, I'm just kind of giving it a try, giving the whole writing thing a try. And um, what I've found is that I can only do about two hours in the morning. Uh, I'm good starting at around eight or nine o'clock, and I got about two, two and a half hours in me before I have to knock off. So I just try and when I can leave some time for myself to, to, to do that. So, but I have the outline done. I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, I just need to write the damn thing. And you know, who knows, uh, it may not be up to snuff. We may have had to hire another writer or have me collaborate with someone. Um, but uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Going to the office for a second, how has your life changed being on the show? I mean, what, have you noticed a lot more doors being opened? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, none of these movie projects would be happening without me being on The Office. And, you know, uh, I definitely was doing movies before The Office, but it's made me a huge international sex superstar. So um, I'm big in Malaysia, the Philippines, Bhutan, Bulgaria, Finland, uh, the uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, huge in some of these places, so they can sell the international rights. Any super fans from these countries that have come to um, No, there's fans all over. People really, they, the great thing about The Office is that people who are fans of it are huge fans of it. So they just go apeshit for it. And uh, people go really, really crazy for it. And it's, it's really nice. Have you 